Medtech company Sereno Scientific has made a strategic change in the last few months. Instead of a broader focus, they have pivoted to the treatment of very rare diseases. Welcome, Sten R. Sorensen, your CEO. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, last week, you announced the choice of target for the second candidate in your portfolio. How come you choose the rare disease IPF for it? Well, uh, so, you know, Sereno, we are untapping the um, potential of epigenetic modulation in cardiovascular and other diseases. And our lead program is in a rare disease. We just uh, announced our top-line results two weeks ago for CS1 in pulmonary arterial hypertension. Very good results, and we're very happy about that. In addition, uh, about the same time, we announced uh, some preclinical work documenting that uh, our CSO14, our second HDAC inhibitor, has an impact on proliferation and fibrosis. Uh, and dose-dependent uh, reduction of, of that in uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension animal studies. Uh, so the move into a rare disease for CSO14 with that capacity and other capacities or characteristics of HDAC inhibition that we have seen with our original substance of which CSO14 is a modification and improvement is a natural one for us. So utilizing the characteristics of the drug in another rare disease such as IPF or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Mm. So this um, pivoting, is it more a conclusion to uh, science and data or for financial reasons? Well, uh, Sereno is built on a very strong uh, scientific platform and a vision to utilize science uh, and the drugs that we pursue to help patients. So we target uh, high unmet needs in diseases and the higher the unmet need and the lack of drugs that can help these patients, the higher the potential of providing something beneficial. So there, there is a there is a scientific reason for moving into a specific indication of patient groups for us. Uh, but that's also coupled with a strategic business orientation. And in this case, uh, rare diseases has a potential for orphan drug designation. They are uh, priced in order to benefit the companies that uh, invest in, in drug development in these diseases. So that will happen. Yeah. So, yeah, so there is a, a good uh, business incentive also mm -hmm. to target rare diseases. Let's dive into that a little bit deeper. So outside ethical motive, I would say that there are always three main arguments for uh, focusing on a more rare disease. You have regulations, of course, and as you mentioned, market and financial benefits. So if you go on these three arguments a little bit for us, please. Yeah, so regulatory-wise, uh, you have the ability, so first, the documentation per se in a rare disease uh, requires the typical steps of phase one, phase two, and phase three for approval. Uh, but there is a, a possibility to get breakthrough therapy fast track because of the very high unmet need. So the likelihood of, of actually getting that from the regulatory authorities is higher. Uh, there's also, if you look at the, then the regulatory uh, approval, uh, you have a possibility to apply for orphan drug designation. And in, in the U.S. and Europe, respectively, you can gain seven years and ten years exclusivity on, upon market approval. And you can get that designation approved, applied and approved way ahead of your market launch. So that's the uh, regulatory and market protection, if you will. And then I mentioned that the pricing is beneficial. So, uh, so that's a, a third one. And the fourth one is the, uh, the capital investment needed is less than for larger uh, indications. So it's less capital intense and it's also shorter t uh, time to market for that reason and the reason of less um, numbers in the patients that you need for your trial. Mm. 
So you had a lot of news this last month. Uh, you were here just a couple of weeks ago. So following this news, you held a Capital Markets Day last week. What was the feeling in the room? Well, we love our Capital Markets Days, and that, that's the one year, uh, one time in the year when we have time to spend with our shareholders that are in the uh, facility on site or uh, online. And uh, because we record the session, it's shared also for the, you know, uh, larger uh, globe, if you will. Uh, so, so we love to do that and to update our shareholders on what we actually are about um, and where we are and our vision forward. So, so that is uh, something we really look forward to this time. Uh, we also had external uh, presenters or speakers that we collaborate with in our various drug development programs. So we had uh, four external presenters or speakers. Uh, one on site, Mike Hollenstadt, who we work with at University of Michigan for several years. And he presented actually the third program, CS 585, an IP receptor agonist that's very potent and very selective for the IP receptor. And of course, we are also looking at rare diseases for that compound as we are moving and positioning the company towards rare diseases in general. Uh, so he presented something very interesting there, uh, several indications of which APS is uh, something that we might go into. In addition, we had John de Backer from Fluida, the founder and CEO of Fluida, that we just signed a collaborative uh, agreement with to look at the uh, structure of the lung and how we possibly impact that over time. And that collaboration will be utilized for the compassionate use program or expanded access program, where we have gotten approval from FDA to utilize uh, our, our drug, uh, a drug uh, the CS1 will be given to patients long term. Mm -hmm. So we expect about uh, half of our patients in uh, the uh, phase 2A trial to continue now and, and get CS1 back. Uh, and uh, we will look at both CardioMEMS data, classical data, and Fluida technology, which is CT scan method, where you can look at the structure of the lung. So John DeBacco was there, and then of course we had Dr. Gouchard from uh, US, who was the number one recruiter of patients in our study. And um, uh, he sees uh, several of his patients will be in the long-term use, but he also explained his experience of utilizing our drug uh, on top of standard of therapy, where he saw an immediate improvement in these patients, and also related that he saw the patient getting worse when CS1 was uh, withdrawn from therapy when the, when the study was done. And then, uh, fourthly, we had our principal investigator and head of the Clinical Steering Committee, uh, Dr. Raymond Bensa, talking about pulmonary arterial hypertension and the need for new therapy and the uh, potential of CS1, our mm -hmm. drug. So, and, and in addition, we were four of us uh, from Syrian on stage. So that was a massive day with only 10 minutes break. Yeah, you said you, earlier you love these days. What made it different this time? How was the room? Was it yeah, bubbling? I think, so, yeah, so it, it's different because I think uh, our shareholders are, are uh, very interested in what we do. A lot of things are happening in a positive way for the company. We first booked a room for 40 people and it was uh, booked immediately when we released uh, the booking. So we had to expand it to 60 and that was also full this time. So fortunately this was a webcast and we are also able then to share the recording, which I hope will happen today or maybe tomorrow. Yeah, but what questions did the, the people that came, shareholders, analysts, potential investors, have for you? Yeah, there was uh, similar questions to you. Why do you choose uh, rare diseases? Why are you mo taking this move strategically? And, and the answer was science unmet need and the potential of our drugs to do beneficial things to these patients, but also a business, uh, of, of course, consideration that this will be good for, for Serena and the shareholders. Another question was, uh, 
have you any talks with potential partners uh, with Sereno? And uh, my reply then was that we have discussions with uh, several pharma uh, companies. Uh, and of course, I can't tell more than that uh, that conversation or, or, or meetings are taking place. Mm. So, you know, high interest, good feeling in the room. Mm. However, this is on another day. So, of course, I'm interested to know, is there anything that you could tell us that you haven't told them last week? Um, that is a good question. I, I feel that I'm communicating more or less every second day. But uh, I think uh, what I maybe didn't tell uh, was that, you know, we put together maybe 200 uh, PowerPoint slides and the team was working day and night to get this together. And not only the shareholders or the people on stage uh, are, or have, you know, are, are excited about where we are, but the whole team at Sereno and our collaboration is energized by our development, and we're working, you know, as a great team together. So that you couldn't see, but you know, we work to midnight, and, and then we continue. So yeah, that I didn't say on stage. Do you feel like you could breathe a little bit this week? Uh, well, <laughs> this week, yes, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, but we have always, you know, things going on uh, secretly. And as I mentioned on stage, what I talked about there, uh, these things strategically was decided several years ago. So the fruits of, of what we decided then are coming out now and I can and we can talk about it now, which is, you know, uh, a pleasure to do. Yeah. Speaking of, what is the next step for your second candidate, CSO14? Uh, so it's currently in phase one. Uh, we're pursuing that uh, together with uh, the CRO CTC in Uppsala. It's, it's going very well. And uh, the target is to complete it by uh, end of uh, H1, so to the summer. And after that, you know, we expect that to go through with flying colors uh, on, on this safety and tolerance study in healthy volunteers. And then we'll go to the uh, regulatory authorities and, you know, apply for a phase two study in IPF. Mm -hmm. And to wrap this uh, up, um, let's say Sereno Scientific as a whole, what will be going on for you uh, the next months? Yeah, so, so on our lead program, we are completing the analysis and, uh, and that's, you know, of course, it's, it's exciting. And then with that analysis, we're also defining uh, our proposal uh, to the FDA and to the European regulatory authorities to have a discussion about, you know, what's next step. And we are eyeing a phase 2B3 or a phase 2B, whatever is best for Sereno and whatever works well with the regulatory authorities, so we can get going with the next study. And we uh, hope to get that regulatory approval by the first half of next year for this study. And then, you know, we'll move on that. And, and the, the target is to start that study uh, beginning of 2026. But there are milestones such as this regulatory approval of CS1. And then uh, we have long-term use in our compassionate use program, including Cardiomems and Fluida on the structure. That's also coming up in the first half, I think, of the year and then continuously. And then, of course, we have CS014 completing a phase one trial. And in addition, we are going to complete the preclinical work with CS585, our third program including talk studies, et cetera, or safety studies, as you say. So many key milestones coming up next year, and uh, that's exciting. I wish you all the best of luck with that. Thank you so much, Stena Sorensen, for joining us here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm.